a spawn camp here. Sorry for the hiatus, but I took a break for the holidays. I hope you all had a great holiday and hopefully started 2021 off well. We left off this series just having built these enemies. They can detect a player and has temporary code to move toward the player. Our next step is to refine this code and have them actually be able to attack the player. But first, in this video, we're going to step back from the enemy for a second and we're going to set up our Doom Guy wannabe, aka player, to have some health so we can actually damage him. Like always, we'll start by opening our project. And for the first thing, I'll clean up this project window since I forgot to last video, and I'll put my scripts in the script folder. Now we can work on our players, so we'll click on the player root game object, and we'll go under these scripts, and we'll add a new component, and it's just going to be a basic script that we'll name player health. As you can see here, the script was added into the root asset folder. This is the result of adding a component through this add component button here. Alternatively, you can go into the scripts folder and create a new C# -sharp file and name it player health. And then you can just drag this script onto the player object and the results are basically the same. This way doesn't require you to tidy up your project so often, but the add component is my go-to, so it's up to you how you do this. But anywho, let's double click here to bring up our script inside our editor. I was using Rider, but you'll see now that I'm back on Visual Studio, but they work practically the same. Alright, let's jump right into it. At the top here above our start function, we're going to say public int max health. And we're going to use private int for our health. And these are ints because we're only going to use whole numbers. And the max health is public because we're going to set it in the inspector. Our health is a private variable because it'll get modified in the script like here. In the start function we're just going to say our health equals our max health. So we're going to control S to save and then if we go back into Unity and check out our inspector you'll see that we have a max health variable now. We're going to keep it basic and we're going to say our max health is 100. To see our private variable we can go up here to these three dots on the inspector and we can change this to debug mode and you'll see now that we have our private health variable. And if we just go to play you'll see that our script just sets our health to our max health. Now let's have our player take some basic damage. Under our update, we're going to say public void damage player. And since our health is an integer, we're also going to pass in an integer in this function, and we're going to name it damage. And our logic in this function is going to start off really easy, and we're just going to say our health is minus equal damage. And the reason this function is public is because it's going to be accessed from outside the script, but for now we're just going to test it, so we're going to make a test function up inside of our void update call. And we're going to say if input.getKeyDown, and for test purposes I like to use the right side of my keyboard, so we're going to use the right shift. And then to test the damage we're just going to say damage player. And here it's going to take our integer and we're just going to say 30. And then we're going to log a message so we can see it actually happening. So we're going to say debug.log player damaged. Then if you save and go into Unity and playtest, you'll see that our health does go down by 30 every time we hit shift. And it even goes into negatives, but we'll fix that later. So we have our basic health, but Doom also has basic armor. So let's do that. So back in our player health script, we're going to do the exact same thing up here at the top. We're going to use a public int max armor, and we're going to use a private int for armor. And in the start, we're going to set our armor to equal our max armor. And this is just for our testing purposes because usually you'd want your player to start with no armor and have to pick it up as they go. So down the road we will have this where it sets a zero from the start. So we're going to need a bit more logic because now we need the damage to affect the armor before it affects the player's health. We'll include all this logic inside the damage player function that we already have. So the gist of it is, if the player has armor, damage it first. But there needs to be deeper logic than this, because if the player has enough armor to absorb all the damage, then we only want to damage the armor. And if the player only has enough armor to absorb some of the damage, then we want the armor to be damaged first, and then the rest of the damage to go to the player. So using these comments, we'll flesh out this function. So first we'll find out if the player has any armor at all. 
we'll use an if statement and say if armor is greater than zero we want to damage the armor else if we don't have any armor then we just damage the player like normal so we'll grab this line we already have and move it into the else condition of the if statement that takes care of our first comment here so next we'll take care of the other two both require the player to have some armor so inside the if statement where we check if we have armor then we'll have another check to figure out how much we have and how we'll handle the damage so if our armor is greater than or equal to the damage our players health remains the same and will issue all the damage to the armor by saying armor minus equals damage now we'll say else if armor is less than damage and we'll need to figure out how much the armor can take and give the remaining damage to the player so to do this we'll use an int called remaining damage and this will be a local variable because it's not needed outside of this function so now we'll just say remaining damage equals damage minus armor that'll set the remaining damage to whatever's left that the armor can't handle so now that the armor is depleted we'll just set the armor to zero and then we'll say health minus equals remaining damage and that should divide the damage between the armor and the health and that'll knock out the last to do comment so we'll clean this up and we'll get rid of the comments and we can save and test in unity you'll see at the bottom right that we're still in debug mode so we see our values change in the inspector so at the start you'll see how our health and armor are set to the max so now if we press the shift key it damages the armor first so we went from having 50 to 20 so now if we damage him again it's going to take all the remaining 20 from the armor and give the other 10 to our players and so our players health is at 90 and if we continue to spam the damage key eventually we go into negative numbers so as our last step we'll add in something to kill off the player so let's go back into our player health script so we could put a check in our update something like if health is less than or equal to zero then the player is dead and if this is a smaller game that's probably fine but since we know that the player's health only changes when we get damaged then we can go inside of our damage player function and check there and that way the check is not happening every frame and just bogging our performance down so let's remove that and down in our damage player underneath all this logic then we're gonna check if we're dead so we're gonna say if our health is less than or equal to zero then the player is dead and an easy way for this to be displayed to us is just to use a debug.log so we can say debug.log player has died but I'm gonna go one farther and I'm gonna set it where our scene resets when we die to reset our scene we'll need our scene manager so at the very very top we're gonna add a using statement and it's gonna be using unity engine dot scene management then back in the very bottom below our debug.log we can simply say scene current scene equals scene manager dot get active scene and that's gonna return this scene and then we're gonna say scene manager dot load scene and this takes in an integer so we're gonna say our current scene that we just set and we're gonna say dot build index so now we can save and go into unity for one final test so we're just gonna move over here so we can see when our scene resets we're just gonna spam our damage test key and when our health reaches zero the scene resets and you can see here in our console that the player has indeed died so that's everything working and before I forget let's go back into the inspector here on these three dots and we'll set this back to normal mode that's about it for this video we have enemies and we have a player with armor and health the next episode we'll probably set up a basic inventory and also mess around with triggers some will give the player health and armor such as pickups and others will damage the player such as lava or toxic waste if you're enjoying the series please like and subscribe so you don't miss the next one Spawn Camp out.